there's one little issue that I still want to talk about, aside from the fact that the targeting for the attack really, really sucks, and that is that I am now dealing a set amount of damage. I'm always dealing 20 damage, and if I want to deal any other amount of damage, I need to make a specific gameplay effect for that amount of damage. And there's a couple of ways around this. The way we could do this is in our gameplay ability, we could use the level for the effect that we have, and we could make a custom calculation class that takes that level in and kind of just uses that level as a damage to apply. And that kind of works fantastically fine, but I don't want to dive into making custom calculation classes yet because that's something that we're going to get into a little bit later. So for now, what I actually want to do, go to our deal damage. Instead of setting this to a scalable float, what we're going to do this is we're going to set this by color. And there we get some other drop down menus and we can say uh, the data tag. Let's also call this event.damage. It's maybe not quite an event. You could make a separate tag for this, something like calculation.damage or whatever. We're going to stick with event.damage for now just to keep it basic. And we're not going to apply a gameplay effect to targets by class, which is what we've been doing so far. What we'll do instead is we will apply a effect spec to the target instead. And that doesn't give us a drop down menu like this, but it gives us a spec handle. And we can make a spec from scratch, more or less. So what we do is we can make a outgoing gameplay effect spec. And there we can, once again, choose the gameplay effect that we want to make. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be deal damage. But now that we have this spec, we have a reference to that gameplay effect. We can actually do stuff with it. We can assign set by color magnitude, or we can assign tag set by color magnitude. We're going to be using the second one there, which is assign tag set color by magnitude. And here we can say uh, whatever tag we put in there uh, at first, so that will be event.damage. And then we can put in our magnitude. So what this will be doing is because this event.damage matches with our gameplay effect for dealing damage, which is looking out for a event.damage, it's going to use whatever we put into this magnitude here as the value for its calculation. So instead of just applying gameplay effect to target like this, we will want to do something very similar. So the top pin here will be the actor info uh, gameplay ability system component. And then the bottom pin will be our target gameplay ability system component. Uh, but before we actually execute that, we will uh, set the value in this gameplay effect here. And then that is the spec that we will be executing. And this magnitude, we can simply promote to a variable and call this damage. And to make things a little bit easier on us, uh, this needs to be a negative number. So what we'll do is we'll get damage and we'll simply uh, negate that float that just turns it into a negative number uh, and we'll be using that instead. So now we can just simply pass in whatever number we want on a per attack basis and we'll be dealing different amounts damage. So with all that out of the way, we've got our hero attack one, which we made last time, which is just a chart of the base attack. And if we go into its class defaults, we can see uh, the amount of damage that we want to do. So let's say we want to actually just do five damage attack. It doesn't need to be a powerful attack. And do make sure that in the abilities that you're granting to your character, uh, because I made this mistake myself, uh, you don't use the base attack anymore because the base attack is not going to have a magnitude set for that. You can set up a default magnitude if you want to as a default value of that variable. Uh, but it's a good thing to keep that at zero so you know when you're using that instead. Uh, let's go to hero attack one, which is the actual attack that we want to be doing. And then also we want to, when we press the button, uh, use hero attack one rather than base. So now that we have that, if we go into here, we'll see that that attack only deals five damage. And that is how we can set that up. So now we can very, very easily just copy hero attack one into two and three, open those up and say, hey, you do melee attack uh, B, which deals 10 damage. And we can say, hey, the third one here, you do melee attack C, which does 15 damage. In our character blueprint then, we can say uh, the abilities on start that we want to grant will be hero attack one, hero attack two, and hero attack three. And it will grant all three of those. Let's get rid of left shift uh, for now, because what we're going to be doing here instead is we're going to be replacing the left mouse button 
uh, which is previously set up for us by the Paragon character itself. And instead of just playing the animation montage, what we'll do is we will try activate ability by class. So we can say, in this case, we want to try activate ability uh, for hero attack one and two and three. And I think at this point, uh, you get what we're going for. You probably want to uh, move these set counters to being after the actual ability activation. So for demonstration purposes, let's just like set this to zero <laughs> for, for right now, so that it doesn't move forward at all, because that really doesn't work as well as I would have thought uh, without any extra uh, stuff, which we'll do in like a separate bonus video or something. And now we'll be able to uh, more easily like spam click as well. And we have like a pretty decent feeling combat system which also takes in like mana. We could of course, instead of making that mana, we could make that uh, stamina and make it regenerate with a infinite gameplay effect that just regenerates like five mana every second or something like that, or stamina, whatever you want to call it. And suddenly we start having a pretty souls-like experience already. And we have the basic setup for what a gameplay ability can do. So next time, let's take a bit more of a closer look at how to bind these two inputs instead. Because uh, right now what we're doing, it, it works fine, uh, but we can do so much, so much more fun stuff uh, with like activating a ability on a certain input and then waiting for that input to be released, like a charge up attack, for instance, and then only when we release that button, actually like doing the attack itself and uh, depending on how long that took the attack can be more powerful and take up more of your mana whatever you want to do with that can be really really cool stuff so next time we'll get into that and a very big thank you to all of my patreons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thanks to my cave digger tier patreons Sergey thomas